data is currently pointing towards a generational buying opportunity here with Bitcoin and the crypto space. And in today's video, we are going to be speaking just about that. What made the market crash and what make it pump back up? Well, we will take a look at that. So make sure to stay tuned for the entire video because there's a lot of information that I'm going to share with you, a lot of charts I'm going to share with you, and let's go and have some fun out there. Welcome back to the Crypto Blue Show. I'm Kiara DeCash, and let's rock this video right out hardcore for you today. Guys, thank you for being back with me on the channel. And if you guys want to trade Bitcoin and cryptocurrency assets with me, then smash the link down in, pinned in the comment just down below, just for you. You and I will get some cool bonuses when you do that and I do that and we can make some cool money here together in the space so let's not waste any more time let's dive right into the video today okay today bitcoin or crypto market cap is only down 1.1 percent you guys can see here on the chart we made a smash down and we erased those gains which is pretty decent so i'm very 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 grateful for that and we will have a little bit of a look at something shortly so just um, bear with me and let's go through this video so Bitcoin is currently sitting at 25,761, Ethereum's down at 1576. So you can see actually on the 24 hour period, there is not much difference, okay? Neither here on Ethereum. So that fall that happened yesterday, it was to fool you. They got you if you sold or shorted. <laughs> okay, now guys, all this bull rubbish about um, uh ftx liquidating billions of billions and billions and billions well guess what guys those billions are going to be liquidated over a long period of time with 200 million dollars every single week split over multiple assets so guys get real it is not going to cause crazy liquidations and crazy drops in the market okay so do not be fooled by that rubbish FUD. $208 for BNB. XRP at $0.47. Cents. Dogecoin at $0.06. Cents. Cardano at $0.24.5. Cents. Solana at $0.17.96. Cents. Guys, I'm only going to read you those ones today because I've got a lot to present to you today in my video with the Fear and Greed Index being down at 30. Didn't I say to you yesterday in my video over here, and haven't I said to you in my videos that actually you guys need to know that when this is in this territory in the fear territory that's when you should be buying crypto when it's in this territory that's when you should be selling crypto okay so right now we're in you know it's very interesting because the the neutral territory is where we need to be very very careful with because we can lose money if it falls and goes into the fear but we can gain money when it goes up into the the greed index so it's it's a 50 50 chance and it is like gambling so know that this is all emotion based stuff now with the crypto bubbles the crypto bubbles are pretty much obliterated today some are up some are down as you guys can see Rollbit is down, Arb is down, Ape is down, Quant is down, Gala down, TWT seems to be, T, TWT, Casper, and Optimism seem to be one of the only, sorry guys, lack of oxygen again, seem to be the only ones that are really making a crazy pump up there. Now let's go and tackle some of this crazy new stuff that we've been seeing out there. So first of all, the Bitcoin price must take 26, says the trader after the textbook short squeeze now isn't that what i just said to you that it was they took your money while you they thought you were going to go short and then they took it back so you got slammed twice if you didn't catch that really nicely so bitcoin shorts start to suffer thanks to a thousand dollar bitcoin relief rally but the key resistance remains in place so we'll have a look at the chart properly in a bit but this was the crazy drop boom I bought on this candle and I bought on this candle and boom, smash right back up, isn't it? Now that candle there tells us we're going to get reversed, but this candle literally engulfed all of this here, okay? Which tells us Bitcoin doesn't want to be down. It doesn't want to be down below the 25,000 level, okay? Um, so you can see here, buyer charts show two large BTC buys, uh, buy walls have been rugged. Support test is inbound. So you can see that that happened there. Then over here, BTC CVD um, prices, very clean perpetual CVD uh, divergence with 
sellers failing to break below the 25k level boom and that's why we had this crazy buy guess what the total liquidations in the chart this is very little with bullet market structure intact on btc 24.8k held and btc dominance is breaking out i think there is a decent argument to be made that our next impulse is just around the corner okay very very cool i like that and um over here bitcoin will bring global payments out of the fax era says ex paypal boss marcus said there's still no universal protocol when it comes to transferring money unlike information which can be saved via email so if you were to send them money but they were not in the u.s citizen here using one of the same fintech apps you're using then you wouldn't be able to do that so we're still in the fax era of global payments and guess what bitcoin is going to explode so i'm going to i'm going to play this video for you but i'm going to play it for you close towards the end so stay tuned for that video the last thing here is persistent macro headwinds could delay bitcoin bull market says arc invest several macroeconomic indicators suggest that bearish headwinds could strengthen during the remainder of 23 and possibly negatively impact the crypto market i'm not so sure about that because what i'm going to show you not in this one but in a few other things the short-term sentiment might be bearish but the long-term sentiment without a doubt is extremely bullish guys we know that already otherwise we wouldn't be trading crypto right and speaking of which you guys want to trade crypto with me go ahead and use the links down below in the pinned in the comments of each one of my videos you will see there that there's a link that you could go ahead and trade these cryptocurrencies with it's my bitflex link and you guys if you deposit a hundred dollars you'll get 10 percent bonus and on bybit if you deposit um when you deposit funds you can get up to a thirty thousand dollar deposit bonus go check those links out down in the description below let's trade this together so this is the federal reserve um funds policy rate versus natural rate of interest so the black line is the um the federal reserve uh, policy rate minus euro and your cpi okay and cpi data comes out tomorrow the green line is the natural rate of interest okay and then the recession lines are the um the vertical gray bars okay so you can see there was the recession uh, kind of in jan 21 we passed that already this was one of the longest terms that there has not been a recession right now we are pumping like crazy the federal reserve rates are way higher than what they should be and they are hitting some resistance levels here as you can see at the two percent level now non-farm payroll revisions recessions non-farm payrolls what happens when it starts to go way crazy down to the minus 400 and that kind of stuff minus 200 that's where we see huge recessions in the american economy now this has been coming down non-stop okay which is telling us that we are going to see something happen so stagflation is usually bearish for risk on assets so this is the johnson red book retail sales index the purple line is the total or same score change year on year the black line is discount same score change uh, same store uh, change year on year and the green is department same store year on year change so you can see here that the green gets obliterated when so the department gets obliterated when the total and the discount shoots up okay so very very crazy news so bitcoin short-term holders capitulate as data highlights potential generational buying opportunity that was the opening to this video i hope you guys got that i just want to share with you certain things here that are busy happening on bitcoin metrics but you can see long-term valuation short-term valuation market sentiment and you can see arcs view is completely bullish on most of it except for uh, the market cost basis being neutral so huge 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 stuff busy happening now this is the bitcoin 200 week moving average and realized price so the black line is the price the purple line is the 200 weekly moving average and the green is the realized so you can see that the green is now has been bounced we tested that we are now bouncing off of practically the 200 um weekly moving average at the moment so that's going to be very very cool now btc market cap dominance guess what it's starting to make a little bit of a bounce here so in terms of price action right now i see a lot of similarities that took place in 2019 and it has me anticipating a trend to unfold regarding 
regarding Bitcoin over the next few weeks and possibly months. It has to do with Bitcoin dominance, BTCD, a measure of Bitcoin's market share of crypto based on its market cap. In the chart below, we can see that that rally in 2019 started back in 2018 when we got a nice double bottom, red box, followed by a solid run up until Q1. So red box and a solid run up until Q1. Okay, now he's saying there's the red box. Um, so followed by a solid run up until Q1 2019. Then we trended down for a few months, first red arrow, before getting the massive reversal on April Fool's Day, first green arrow. Okay, so box, pump, capitulation, pump on April Fool's Day. Okay, so as April Fool's Day is more along the lines of where the Bitcoin halving will be, that is particularly where we're looking at. So right now, a, um, August 28th is the date that this was done and basically you can see that we are looking for that green line to make a huge pump to the upside. Now this is what I wanted to show you. Stablecoin aggregate market cap 90 day percentage change. So the green is positive 90 day and the red is negative and the black line is the price. So has been negative since July which is where it bottomed out. Now this is all accumulation periods guys for the past year literally for one year more than one year now we have had an accumulation phase for bitcoin now that brings me to a shitty article that i just need to sidewind here because the former celsius ceo alex machinsky seeks to quash us ftc case machinsky was arrested in july on allegations of misleading investors and manipulating the sell token after celsius declared bankruptcy so this guy is trying to get away with basically extorting billions and i'm one of them so I hope you get a, a very, very hardcore, um, uh, you know, um, hearing and and um, court movement against you, Mr. Alex Machinsky, just like FTX had. Why should you get clear and 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 um, Alex and uh, Jason Sun and uh, Sam Bankman free get you know go to jail, but you don't? No way, it's China. Bye bye. Go. What do you guys think down in the comments below? Do you think Alex Mashinsky should be um, in the same position as FTX, especially because he had not the same amount, but a little bit less, but a very similar amount there. So let me know what you guys think down below. Now I wanna bring something to your attention. I'm gonna go through this very quickly in a moment, but I wanna show it to you from CoinGlass here. This is the cryptocurrency longs versus shorts in the last 24 hours. The 24 hour long volume increased by 146%, whereas the short volume increased by 140%. And you can see there that's a 20 billion versus 19.8 billion. So it's pretty much even Stevens at the moment. Um, and you can see here, although 18 plus 34, hugely bullish still, whereas there's not much bearish sentiment. There's about 30% bearish sentiment. 18% of people are neutral, and then the rest of them are absolutely bullish. Now, you can see here, this is the long to short ratios. This is the green is obviously the longs, the red is the shorts. And we're going into the, the shorting, uh, the shorts increased, but you can see once they get to that kind of pinnacle point, they haven't been up there for, for very long. So you can see that once it reaches this kind of high, then it starts to drop and lots of longs start to open up. Now, I need to point something out to you, my beautiful community, is that you can see the majority of the time, it's actually in the green. Would you agree? Let me know down in the comments by saying green or red, okay? And by saying that, it means that more people are longing Bitcoin than people are shorting Bitcoin. Keep that in mind when I show you the glass node charts. Now, the BTC long and shorts ratio, this is where it all happened. You guys can see here, um, Binance, of course, is the biggest one. So we all know that. And you can see there that we are pretty much flattened out from yesterday's little jump. So guys, you're enjoying the video, please smash a thumbs up. I would love to get at least 10 thumbs up on the video. And if you're watching this video and have not yet subscribed to my Crypto Bliss channel, please go ahead and do that, guys. That would be truly and gratefully and abundantly appreciated. Let's jump quick, 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 quick into the liquidity drought from Glassnode. Okay, so because Glassnode is talking about liquidity drought. And let's go and have a look at this. So just in a nutshell, I'm going to fly through this. So 
thank you for having patience with me, but liquidity, volatility, and volumes continue to compress across the digital asset market with many metrics falling back to 2020 pre-bull levels. Stable coins are experiencing a persistent decline in supply as redemptions are made across all major stablecoin assets with the exempt, ex exception of Tether. The long-term holder cohort are steadfast in their holdings, spending remarkably little bit of it. Short-term holders, on the other hand, are teetering on the edge of profitability with a large majority of their supply acquired above the current price range. So stablecoins, um, market realized value net capital change breakdown. So you guys can see here that the uh, black is the BTC price. The orange is the BTC net capital change. The blue is the ETH net capital change. And the green is stablecoins net capital change. So you guys can see marginal period of Bitcoin and Ethereum inflows have reversed to outflows. You can see there, boom, that happened. The same is kind of happening here at the moment. But that means that we are about to get some strong inflows back into the space. Okay. Stablecoins aggregate market cap percentage change. So you can see here, uh, BTC price is the black line, aggregated market cap is the kind of the reddish line. And then you can see here aggregated supply declined from 163 to 120, which is okay. And net case stablecoin redemption starts down here. So guys, this stuff is crazy because stablecoins aggregate supplies, you can see here that USDT has increased whereas USDC has decreased because of all the FUD that was around USDC. And then BUSD also decreased because of the FTX low and, and the FTX debacle, guys. So FTX really messed it up a lot for all of us. So stablecoin supply dominance is relative. USDT is 69%, USDC is 21%, BUSD is 2.1%, uh, and it has fallen, DAI 4.5, TUSD is 2.7%, guys. Major asset buy side versus sell side um, exchange inflows. So the buy side regime is the green, as you can see there, it's all buying. The sell side regime is the red, okay? So it was all sell pressure up here. Now the neutral regime is in the box, okay? So very, very interesting. So Bitcoin realized volatility on one month has increased, okay? Realized volatility is lower than current value, okay? Which is what we're, what word is being said in terms of the volatility of the space has been very, very low until the past two weeks and of course yesterday. So BTC entity adjusted volume, okay? Current value is 2.4 billion. You can see here network settlement is residing at pre-21 bull market conditions, okay? Boom, from here. Look at this crazy, crazy, crazy level. So now with that being said, realized profit and loss, guess what? BTC is, um, uh, this is the BTC price, uh, sorry, market cap, yeah, price. Uh, combined realized is the is the kind of orange. BTC realized profit is the green line. BTC realized loss is the red line. And current combined realized is the blue line. So current value is 156 million, this is down there. So you guys can see how slow it has been over here. But when it's slow, look at what happens when it starts to make a move back up above the blue line at the bottom here. So realized cap hodl waves is hot supply. You can see there, hot supply is 2.6 of all realized value. Um, and the peak liquidity uh, is low hot supply. So Bitcoin futures volumes, uh, current uh, futures volumes is 12 billion a day. So it dipped here, but then it increased over time. So very, very beautiful. Bitcoin's options volumes have increased as well. Uh, current value is about $437 million a day, and the all-time high of $1.56 billion a day. Options, ATM implied volatility, so you can see that the volatility has lowered. Uh, Short-term and long-term holder threshold, the red line is, of course, the BT short. Short-term holder supply, the blue line is the long-term holder supplier, um, supply, excuse me, and red is short-term supply. The um, grayish line is the long-term holders and uh, sorry this is the gray and that's the long-term holders and this is the short-term holders so the short-term holders are currently getting their asses handed to them um, and the long-term holders are in very very strong position 
because you can see here the long-term holder supply is increasing whereas the short-term holder supply is actually decreasing which meaning which means that more bitcoin is currently being sucked out of the market and being held by the long-term holders so uh bitcoin liveliness spending dominant transition holding hodling dominance so this is the hodling dominant and that is still currently busy taking place at the moment so um, the true median price currently true market mean is 29.6k and the realized price is currently 20.3k so the market sensitivity is very very interesting and ntc entity adjusted unspent realized price distribution short-term holders is the red long-term the blue and exchanges are the gray so guys short-term holders are largely in a loss okay um so very very interesting stuff bitcoin short-term holder percent supply and profit is all the way down here so if you are holding bitcoin for the short term okay you are going to lose money or you're in a loss long-term holder supply percentage supply and profit guess what we're working our way back up to 26.7 percent of the long-term holder supply remains in a loss okay we're also in a loss but that's because the market has been completely and absolutely and utterly obliterated I want to go and have a look at the Dixie chart, but before I do that, make sure you like the channel, subscribe to the channel, and let's go ahead and look at the Dixie chart. So on the weekly, the Dixie chart is currently reversing, um, but it has broken above the 50 and closed in a volumetric candle above the 50, which for me, guys, is uh, is a level that says that, well, you know, the, the Dixie might want to make its way, continue to make its way back up. Now, total three, this is the crypto market cap excluding bitcoin and ethereum now i've previously drawn all of these beautiful boxes and lines and support areas and everything for you and i need you guys to go ahead and have a look at this now because this is the line that we draw in the sand and i say that because now look at that beautiful triangle pattern that we are forming here so maybe we pull down a little bit more but maybe we kind of do something like this but be cognizant because we have that death cross on the crypto okay it's not bitcoin it's on crypto and basically we're under the 50 moving average right now so if we don't get back up above this territory and somewhat range between the 200 and the 50 very very soon in the next couple of weeks guys we are going to see this continue to fall and drop and i just want to say to you Right now, you can see the level of support that we're on is from the previous all-time high, which hopefully that holds very strong support, but it is only one level. Whereas if we were to break this level and break below, guys, my goodness me, we could see some absolute obliteration come into the space and the total crypto market cap could end up coming right down here to the $146, $150 billion uh, level, which is still another 55 to 60 percent lower okay that's a shit scary thought okay doesn't mean it's going to happen my personal view is that we will start to find some support here and we will start to eventually make our way back to the upside now i'm going to delete that line there for you uh bitcoin let's go and have a look at the bitcoin and what happened in bitcoin chart yesterday currently on the weekly time frame i need to be very very powerful with you guys because we have had um a on the weekly time frame we've actually got very very strong um bullish divergence higher highs lower highs okay now you can see here on the rsi that we are very very oversold and the last time we were this oversold was at this point okay and guess what we were here okay which means that the, the price just fell a little bit and then it made this crazy 100 percent pump to the upside now what i want to share with you guys okay is going and zooming in on this quite substantially okay let us go and have a look at it what it's doing right now because the sell volume guys i'm being real with you the sell volume is weak even with all of this it is weak okay do not be fooled do not sell your bitcoin to the fools um to the smart people that are going to buy your bitcoin so we crash below here 
this candle is trying to engulf this candle if we can do that honestly this looks like a bit of a, a railway track candle and normally when we have this it looks as so here's a perfect example when this candle is engulfed guess what we made this crazy move to the downside and same thing here now that sell volume on the weekly was low but this the sell volume on the daily is pretty high but remembering that the max um, that the higher time frame charts overrule the shorter time frame charts so if we go ahead and look at the four hour the four hour touched the 50 it didn't quite close above the 50 we're still in some um, move to the upside on the rsi with good decent volume coming in buy volume coming in plus a level now guys i want to say to you excuse me i actually bought more bitcoin here on my trade that i shared with you um and then i put an entry level at twenty four thousand eight hundred and that's on bybit so bybit it missed it by 53 dollars guys it missed my other entry by 53 dollars but it doesn't matter because this area was the buying opportunity right here okay so i got into my position and i'm now in a very strong position position where i've converted and increased my position size from ten dollars okay trading with ten dollars Okay, at a 5x, so it's $50 worth. It's now at um, nearly $500 worth, okay, because I've been entering into this as it, as it constantly falls down. So, I wanted to go and show you one last chart. So, USDTD, okay. Let's go and have a look at the USDT dominance because USDT dominance is going to tell us where the market sentiment is heading, okay. So you can see I haven't done anything here for a while, but we broke out of this triangle here. We so we broke out of it here. We found support. We broke up. We found support. Kind of found more support. Pulled back up. Hit this box. Capitulated a little bit. And since yesterday, we you know we've been pulling up nicely here, but we have not yet broken this high here. Okay, um, which means that we could be making a lower high from all of these highs over here but this high is higher than that which you know is very interesting right because essentially that should be pointing to us that this could perhaps be coming to the downside so it's wide in the bars i want to say to you that we are on support here so maybe we bash here maybe we kind of consolidate somewhere like this then we find that this starts to break back down i don't know what do you guys think let me know down in the comments below i'd love to hear what my crypto bliss community thinks because on the weekly we have an extraordinarily overbought usdt which means that liquidity is finally like i showed you on the glass node chart that liquidity is going to start coming back into crypto okay and into these risk on assets so as much as this has been increasing okay you can see here that this was an increase drastically so this was the top in bitcoin the double top in bitcoin okay this was the major crash in bitcoin and everyone removed their currency to put uh they sold their bitcoin to put it into usdt i don't blame them guys look how much money they made okay they made 244 percent more money than um what they had before so why wouldn't they sell some of their bitcoin take some profits guys that's the point so for me, I think that this is going to give us a heavy rejection here. We're kind of getting some sort of double top over here, okay, in the moment. And this is also starting to make some sort of M pattern, right? So maybe we come down there and if we break this level, the target of that will probably be maybe this level here, I would say, okay? Which means that that's great. Okay, because that means all of this kind of comes back into the crypto and the and the um and the risk on asset space so let me know what you guys think down below it's been a crazy video for you i'm going to leave you with this um this video right here right now so i hope you guys enjoy it and um, thanks for being here with me and david marcus on bitcoin as base settlement layer for trillions of dollars of transactions let's go ahead and listen to it make sure to hit my bitflex and my bybit links pinned in the comments down below for you let's go trade cryptocurrency together 
And thanks for being here with me. Appreciate you all. Much love. And make sure to watch these other videos up here because these videos were crazier than this one. Love you all and um, enjoy this little video. Thank you. And so we were just saying the, the state of fintech and the state of, of payments and, and where we really are. You're working on a new project. I shouldn't even say a new project, but a project around the Lightning Network, which is aimed at basically taking Bitcoin. You can explain it better than I can. Effectively, you take it off chain and then put it back on chain to make these transactions faster. Yes, actually, what we're trying to do is turn Bitcoin into a, a real payment, global payment network, because you know we have many tourists walking right outside of the studio right now. If you were to stop one of them and uh, wanting to communicate with them, you could ask them for an email address and you can email them easily the next minute. Uh, you could text them, you could add them to a group video chat, you can do all of these things. But if you were to send them money, if they were not a U.S. citizen here in the U.S. using one of the same fintech apps you're using, uh, then you wouldn't be able to do that. And so we're still in the fax era of global payments, and that's what we're attempting to solve. Right. Well, why is that so important, by the way? Because the truth is, I can use Venmo. I mean, others can use services that, that are connected to each other. Why is, it so, why is that such a terrible answer? So let, let's, let's double-click on that for okay. a second. So you can use Venmo, but if someone is not using Venmo they or can't. is an international uh, right. tourist walking right outside right, right now, but you right can't now send if them I money. have an iPhone and I want to message somebody, I mean, if, if I don't have WhatsApp and somebody wants to WhatsApp me, they have to get the WhatsApp app. But you have texts, which is universal, where you can actually communicate and reach out to anyone you want in the world with one simple addressing scheme, which is a phone number, which is human readable. And you can't do that with money. There's no universal protocol for money on the internet that actually enables value to be transported to, right. through the internet. So if you were to want to send money to one of these people, you would probably need to ask them for a bank account number. The bank account number would be in different format depending on where you are in the world. You would have to actually physically walk to a branch and pay $50 right. to do an international wire. And if it's after Friday, 5 p.m., right. tough luck. And how big a business is that? It's ginormous, right? It's trillions of dollars of transactions that transit through SWIFT and right. other payment networks. Well, right? let me ask you a separate question, which is around Bitcoin. We've watched the valuation of Bitcoin sort of sit around $25,000, $26,000. We've all been questioning, so where does this go? And does Bitcoin ever really become a currency, which is what you talk about it becoming? Do you think the value of Bitcoin needs to or can move up if it's actually a currency? Meaning I've always made the argument the currency problem is if, if Bitcoin is, if you think Bitcoin is going 30 or 50 or $60,000, there's no way I'm going to spend it on, a, you know, a pizza yeah. or on anything, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, if I think it's going to go down, by the way, I might spend it immediately. Our, our, so our view is actually that Bitcoin is not the currency that people will use to buy things. But a fragment of a Bitcoin on top of Lightning is like a, a small packet, data packet on the Internet, only for value. And so you can exchange at the edges of the network and send dollars to someone that will receive Japanese yen on the other side uh, or send dollars to someone who will receive euros on the other side. And uh, the actual net settlement layer that is used is basically Bitcoin, Lightning, and it settles in real time, cash final, and at right. a very, very low cost.